In this lesson, we'll be adding a simple staircase and making edits to the stair boundaries. In Revit, you will immediately see that we do quite a bit in one action when it comes to sketching out stairs. The rise, run, stringers, railings, and even stair landings are created by simply drawing a few lines. Revit does not, however, automatically allow us to be too creative when it comes to the overall shape of the stairs. Suppose you want to add an architectural feature such as an arc to the stair landing. We will do exactly that in this lesson by modifying the boundaries. The first step, pun intended, is to create a simple set of stairs. Later on, we'll get into some more complicated situations, but to get the ball rolling, let's do something a little more remedial. To get started, open up your Revit file called U-Shape Stairs and follow along. To give you an example of what the stairs are going to look like, take a look at my 3D view as I spin it around. This is going to be our end product. What I'd like you to do is go to level 2 in the project browser. The reason we go to level 2 is the fact that we have a landing here on the second floor and it resolves on an overall floor on the first floor. What I'd like you to do is go ahead and zoom in on the very front part of this landing and delete any obstructions you may have, such as a staircase. In level 2, what I'd like to do is go to the Architecture tab. We go to the Architecture tab because it's now time to draw our stairs. What you'll see in the Circulation panel is the Stair button. Go ahead and click the Stair button and it brings you into Sketch Mode. While in Sketch Mode, you'll see we have a few choices. What I want to do is simply select Run. This means we're just going to draw out our stairs in a line-based format and all the components that I mentioned earlier are going to be drawn automatically. But before I do that, I'd like to focus on the properties of the actual floor plan. We want to set our base level at level 1. Right now it's currently at level 2. Revit thinks we want to start at level 2 because we're physically at level 2. So go ahead and click the drop down under base level and go to level 1. Our top level, however, wants to go to level 2. We need to give Revit this information because it will make the calculation of the stairs based on the distance between level 1 and level 2. If we'd like a multi-story top level, meaning if our stairs go from level 1 all the way to level 5, we can select that here. So go ahead and select level 5 as a multi-story top level and click apply. It's time to start drawing our stairs. Go to the intersection of the reference plane and the floor landing as shown here and click on that point. Once you see the intersection snap appear, go ahead and pick that point and start drawing your stairs out. What you'll see is a little indicator saying how many rises you have and how many you have remaining. Come out until you see nine rises created and nine remaining and pick that point. This will be the first half of our stairs. We'd like our stairs to actually wrap back towards the landing and resolve in a U shape. To do this, make sure your alignment line is lined up with the end tread. Come up until you hit the intersection and pick that point. Bring your cursor all the way past the landing until you see nine risers created and zero remaining. You can click any point as shown here. It doesn't matter if it's beyond it, as long as it's not short of the landing. If all you wanted was this landing to be straight at the edge here, you'd be done. In this lesson, we're going to make it a little more aesthetically pleasing by adding a radial front. To do that, we need to actually convert this landing into a sketch-based landing. What that means is, if you select this landing, you'll see that you have four grips. You can stretch it lengthwise and widthwise. However, you can't alter the shape unless you convert it to a sketch-based landing, which we'll do now. Click Convert to Sketch-Based Landing. Now, you may get a dialog that comes up saying that this is irreversible. That's okay, just hit close. Now that this is set to sketch base, go ahead and click on Edit Sketch. You will now see four green lines, and you'll see that we're in sketch mode. This is exactly what we want. To begin, go ahead and select this line, and click your Delete key on your keyboard to get rid of it. The reason we're doing that is because we're about to draw an arc. If Revit sees a line here, and an arc here, it's going to give us an error. Everything in Revit has to be completely continuous. No gaps, no overlaps. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to click my Start End Radius Arc button. Go ahead and click that. For the first point, I'd like to click the end point of the green line at the top, and then click the end point of the green line on the bottom. Move your cursor to the right until you get to approximately six feet. 
and just type in six feet and hit enter. Once you see that that's drawn in, hit escape twice. Now you'll see that our continuous perimeter is drawn in. If we click finish edit mode, this will actually bring us back to the edit mode that the stairs are in. One last thing I'd like you to do is click on the railing button. What happens is Revit is going to either set it up with default or another handrail that you can choose from. Select handrail pipe for this lesson. We want our handrail to be on the stringer, not on the treads, so make sure stringer is selected for position. Click OK. We're done. Click finish edit mode and your stairs will be drawn in. We will get a warning that says the rail is non-continuous. That's fine. Close out of the warning dialog. Let's go to a 3D view to see how our stairs are shaping up. So as you can see, with just a small amount of input, Revit can add the rise, run, stringers, and railings all in one shot. If we cut a section, create an elevation, or add a callout to this area, these items will only have to be modified once to be updated in all these views. That sure does make our jobs a bit easier.